uh, as you already met, uh, Steve, uh, as a career consultant of our school, will be uh, with us here today. And if we talk about the program of today, I will be talking about the Istanbul, uh, talking about the city Istanbul and Istanbul Gedik University today. So I have a small, maybe not that small presentation. And then uh, thanks to my so-called small presentations, we will have the smallest presentation probably because I always you consume his time as well. So let's get started with my presentation today. And meanwhile, so uh, if you have questions, please use the chat box uh, during the presentation. So at the end, we can answer your questions. This is the globe globe's part where we are on, but where are we exactly? This is the map of Turkey. And here we are in Istanbul. Istanbul. Istanbul spreads into two continents, Asia and Europe. And as Gedik University, we are mainly located in the Asian part, but we also have a small campus, tiny campus on the European part, but our main branches are in the Anatolian part, Asian part of the city. Uh, Istanbul is a city that hosts uh, a lot of different cultures and religions and people with different backgrounds. And as I said, it has uh, parts in two different continents. And this is the uh, scenery from Asian side to European side. And here you can see the view from the European side to the Asian side. And Istanbul, it's the, one of the biggest cities in the world. Is it scary or fun or just magical or full of opportunities? Of course, it depends on your uh, aspect, your point of view. But for me personally, I just find it magical and full of opportunities. So I picked some uh, mystical photos here to convince you to this idea here. And it's, it's really huge, but is it hard to get around here? So really it's not because there are several public transportation options here in Istanbul. Uh, now in this picture, we are looking at the Bosphorus Bridge and this yellow bus is a special bus. It's not only any uh, bus, uh, it's, a, it's called Metro bus. It has a special lane, so it's, it's faster than the normal buses. And this is my favorite, uh, the most romantic way of getting around Istanbul is the ferries. So uh, as a city hosting the Bosphorus, so we have very romantic ferries uh, to get around the Bosphorus in Istanbul. And of course we have one of the most developed uh, subway lines here in Istanbul. And we also host, we don't uh, get rid of the retro stuff. And we have a couple of retro trends and we also have the modern version of it. Of course, all of these public transportation vehicles are disinfected regularly for your safety and for our safety. And if we have to talk about the student life in city. Oops, where am I? Oh, sorry. Yes, here. They said your voice is a bit low, Gil, so maybe, I don't okay. know if you have okay. other programs I can, open. I can, I can talk louder, maybe. Okay. So, as I said, we have some really nice sceneries around here, so you can just sit on top of a building and watch the city during your whole education years here in Istanbul, or you can also Pick, this, uh, pick a nice scenery to work, to study. Uh, it's one of the options. We also have some magnificent libraries around here. And in this picture, in this third picture, you are looking at my personal favorite. It's called South Galata. It's open to public, it's free. It's a complex of uh, library and museum and some social facilities. And our university, Getting University also uh, has several libraries on campuses. You can also uh, choose them to study. But in Turkey, we have a very uh, laid back, relaxed uh, uh, learning environment. So students do not come to campuses, uh, not only to learn or to study, but only to socialize, to hang out. So uh, it's always relaxed and fun, I can say. And let's talk about the Gedik group uh, a bit. So Gedik University was founded by uh, Gedik Corp, uh, which is a very uh, big, very 
uh, large manufacturer uh, around Europe and the world. And it has several sections uh, like Gedic Welding, Gedic Wall, and Gedic Health or Gedic Art. And Istanbul Gedic University is a part of this corp. And this corp is led by a female, Ms. Hülya Gedik, and I'm proud of having this female president, which is not very common in you know, this part of the world, let's say. And our story begins in April 2010. Gedik Corp decides to start a vocational program to grow uh, some qualified labor force for its corporation. But soon after this vocational program, the Gedik uh, University becomes a uh, full university with six faculties. And now we host more than 6,000 students. And we have several campuses around Istanbul. Uh, in this picture, you can see a combination of uh, the visuals from different campuses. And now our new campus area is being filled uh, with a huge, huge area. And to get an impression of the uh, institution, the university, you can take a look at the numbers here. As I said, we have more than 6,000 students on campus at the moment, and we offer more than 90 different degree programs. And let's take a look deeper. So we have six faculties, fine arts, law, economics, administrative and social sciences, engineering, health sciences, and sport sciences. And we are also quite strong at the uh, vocational schools, vocational schools. We offer more than 25 programs and uh, they're mostly offered in Turkish, but we also have this foreign trade program in the vocational schools uh, offered in English. And so after studying uh, at vocational schools, you basically uh, get a job in two years. So that's what makes them so special. And about the four year programs, bachelor programs. Here you can see all the programs we offer in these faculties, but I want to put emphasis on the programs offered in English. Here we have international relations. It is offered 100% in English. And we have international trade and finance in English as well. And we have mechatronics engineering. It's offered both in Turkish and in English. So we have two different programs here. You can choose the branch you want, Turkish or English program. And um, the, the other programs you are looking at, they're offered in Turkish. But uh, I know you're really good at English. Uh, I know about your school. And so you wouldn't need any English preparation class to study a department in English. But for a change, if you want to study a program offered in Turkish, we have this spectacular language preparation for Turkish. So you can follow Turkish preparation program for a year, and then you can start studying, I don't know, architecture in Turkish or uh, physiotherapy in Turkish. And uh, as a company uh, investing a lot in research and development, uh, university hosts uh, a lot of research centers. So um, there are more than, I think, 20 research centers at the moment at the university. And oops, yes, I have to talk about laboratories as well. So the technological infrastructure is the most demanding part for the university, the most problematic part maybe. And it takes a lot of time to uh, provide facilities, laboratory facilities, and establish good uh, cutting edge laboratories for universities. But as an advantage, uh, we are um, we have this deep scaled company, Gedik Holding, behind us, with us. So we can use the facilities of Gedik Corp. So they allow us, they let us use their laboratories, their I mean real laboratories. So it's a, we provide um, uh, some uh, impressive experience for our students. To our students. Okay. And student life on campus. At the moment, we have more than 20 student clubs. And here you can see some of them. But if you have an idea and a few friends around you, you can just come to, the, uh, come to us and talk about your ideas and we're gonna support you. You can find your club and you can uh, get started immediately. 
Everybody can start their own club. Yeah. And my favorite part again. So I mentioned about Gedic art at the beginning. When you look at these concepts like art and industry, they look a bit irrelevant at the beginning. But this is what I like about this university. So Gedic University connects art and industry. Look at this picture, lady dancing with the robotic arms here. So uh, Gedic art performs for the students with the students. So they also host our artists from the university. So this is something astonishing for me. So I have to tell you about this. Internship and job opportunities, probably you already, uh, you were already expecting to hear about this. Uh, this is just a hint. This is actually Steve's role to talk about. So I won't be stealing his role. So this is just a hint, let's move on. This is also Steve's part as well. We offer job opportunities for international students. <coughs> and as the uh, primary uh, responsible for this project as well, still we'll be talking about this. And my part, as international director, I can talk to you about the international opportunities we offer. So we have more than 40 bilateral agreements with different universities around the world. For example, uh, if uh, you're a student for, uh, at the International Relations Department, you can study a term or a semester at, in China at uh, Shanghai University, for example. Or with, for the other departments, we are involved in, we are in this Erasmus Plus program. Erasmus Plus program allows you to study or do your internship in Europe uh, for a term or for a year. And you are supported financially. <coughs> Uh, like you get like 400 or 500 euros per, per month during this program. So we are actively involved in this program and we have more than 42 agreements in this program. In uh, about full-time students, uh, like at the moment, 5% uh, of our students are international, like uh, which means we have more than 400 full-time international students here at the university. And accommodation. At the moment, Gedik University uh, doesn't have its own accommodation facility because of the pandemic, so, but we are getting prepared. We are going to uh, probably open an, uh, a dormitory soon. But uh, meanwhile, we have some agreements with private dormitories. And here on Sequin, uh, you are looking at the rates of these uh, accommodation facilities, but it's also very easy to find a studio flat for yourself around the campus. There are many uh, options here. And uh, if we can uh, start our uh, dormitory till you come here, we will be also supporting you with our dormitory as well. But here uh, we have like five to 10% discount for our students as well. So you can discount them now. And the tuition fees, you're looking at them. I don't like pronouncing numbers, uh, but I like pronouncing the scholarship opportunities. So depending on your uh, transcript, your academic success, you can be offered scholarship up to 1%, which means full scholarship. So uh, as you apply, you can send your intention letter along with your transcript and application documents. So our uh, application committee will be evaluating your application with a scholarship option. But how to apply? What do you need? You just need your high school diploma, your transcript and your, your passport copy. And we have friends here who will be supporting you with your application if you want, but I can give you a quick tour if you're interested at the end. So we have our website here and it has a huge button in the middle saying apply now. So when you click, you have no choice but apply. So this is end of my presentation. I will- uh, uh, Miss the team. scholarship incentive part. Sorry? I have missed the scholarship incentive part. Okay, here. Thank you. Okay, so I said, uh, if you're academically successful or maybe 80% or something, you can send an intention letter along with your application documents here, high school diploma, transcript, passport, you send an intention letter saying that, okay, I want to apply for a scholarship, la la la. And then we have an application committee that evaluates all the uh, applications 
So they evaluate your application with this notes a scholarship demand. And at the end, we send you an offer letter. Uh, if your scholarship approved, you also see uh, the rate of the scholarship you, you get. So Gilsum, someone's asking in the chat, did they need ELTS or a GRE? I mean, GRE is for a master's program. I don't know about ELTS. Uh, <laughs> Students asking me this. Oh, you mean this I-E-L-T-S? Yeah, or GRE, good academics. Of course you need a good academic record. IELTS examination is not valid in Turkey, not only get it university, but as a country, Turkey, they do not recognize this IELTS examination. But for us, we just need these three documents for application. After the application, if you are going to study at a department offered in English, you can sit for a proficiency exam in English. Or if you pick the program in Turkish, you can sit for, or you don't need to sit, maybe you just don't know, uh, you don't, don't speak Turkish. Uh, you directly, uh, you prefer directly going to the uh, Turkish courses. So you don't need any extra scores. You don't need any examinations. And um, if you have, you can uh, just, uh, can submit your TOEFL score, TOEFL IBT score, just to be exempt from the prep school in English. Uh, other than that, we also, you don't have to invest in those examinations. We provide this for you. You can just sit for the proficiency exam here. And a student is asking if the tuition amounts you gave are annual, are those yearly amounts? Uh, annual, annual, annual. These are annual. They're asking how they'll get a scholarship without any exam. So how do they get the scholarship? So they have to submit their transcript. Okay. Um, my first slide, I hope everyone can hear me okay. My first slide is basically things that uh, Gusum already spoke about. So I'm not gonna go over these things cause she talked about these things, but this point here, unparalleled career support is very important. So what I like to talk about is my sandwich. Um, first of all, you have excellent language preparation. If you need it, we help you with English or with Turkish. Um, then you get the excellent education. And the final part of the sandwich is excellent career support. And I like to think of a university education as a sandwich where we prepare you to come in, we give you the excellent education and then excellent career support. My sandwich is of course vegan because I'm a vegan, there is no meat on this sandwich. So basically, Gedik University provides the qualified language prep, qualified education and qualified academic staff but what is really the Gedik difference? And this is what I'm here to talk to you about. It is our mission. Basically, as we said, your future is our mission. It is our mission. It's almost an obsession here at Gedik to assist our international students with their careers after graduation. At Gedik University, we do not forget about you after you graduate. <clears throat> I am your career counselor until one of us dies. So, Basically, this is what it looks like after you leave Gedik. So what are some of the services I offer? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I offer two primary services. My first service is to help you to determine what you want to do, to help you to establish your career objective. More importantly, my second service is I help you to achieve that objective. So a lot of universities have career counselors that help you decide what you want to do, but they don't help you do it. I help you to go out and achieve your career objective. So I give all sorts of soft skills trainings. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one career coaching. You can get an appointment with me and we can meet as often as you want, once a week, even twice a week. Some of the students, they never call me. Some of the students, they meet with me every week. Um, I can give you information about companies that are willing to hire non-Turkish citizens. And the reason that you get such good career service at Gedik is because I'm like you. I'm a foreigner looking for a job in Turkey. So I know what it's like. I know what it's like to come here and to not be Turkish and to look for a job. So you get excellent support for international students here at Gedik because of me. 
We give you panels where people from different sectors come in and speak, people from different functions come in and speak. And I give Turkish lessons to whoever wants them. I speak fluent Turkish, just with a funny accent. So I'm happy to give Turkish lessons to you guys. Um, these are just some examples of the companies that are, are looking for Gedik students and Gedik graduates, Gedik alumni. They're looking to hire them right now. In fact, we have about 40 companies, four zero, that are looking for international students right now. Very few universities in Turkey can tell you this. We have dozens of companies that want to hire our graduates. And there are not many universities in Turkey that can say that. This is my contact information, my cell phone number. Of course, you do 0090, you have to dial the country code 90, and then 538. You can email me here. Um, I can upload these to the chat so that you have my email and my phone number. And you can call me or email me anytime. I'm gonna upload these now. The international code for Turkey. And anybody who wants to contact me can contact me there. So that's basically my presentation. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them now or by email. So how hard would you describe it to get adjusted to the Turkish uh, culture for a foreigner? I mean, the language barrier and the food and I mean, you, you get the question, right? Sure. Do you want me to answer that, Kusum, or do you want to answer it? No, I think this question directly addresses you. Okay. The food is amazing. So <laughs> forget about forget about the food. Turkish food is amazing. You can expect to definitely get fat while you're here if you're not careful. Um, in terms of the culture, uh, unbelievably easy to adapt to. Um, Turks are generally, of course, not everybody in Turkey is the same. So I can't say this is the way Turks are. But generally, in general, um, I have had no problems. I'm here for 25 years. And I have experienced very few problems. Um, they're generally very welcoming to foreigners. Um, if they don't speak English, they'll grab somebody who does. <laughs> like I speak fluent Turkish now, but when I first came here, <clears throat> if I'm trying to communicate with somebody and they don't understand me, they would just want to help you. They're very helpful. So they would, you know, say, does somebody here speak English? <laughs> we got to help this guy. So. The adapting to Turkish culture is extremely smooth and easy, definitely, without a doubt. Is there any way to get scholarship by any conditional exam, such as college, colleges, clubs, Olympia, or any program organized by your university? I That's couldn't hear that very well, but I think I can say uh, I think you asked about the scholarships, but uh, we don't need any extra um, examinations or scores to offer you a scholarship. We just take- uh, uh, you, you don't prefer IELTS score? Sorry? You don't prefer IELTS score? No. So I just put in not here. But why? IELTS. Turkish government, <laughs> so it's not uh, recognized oh, in Turkey. Government. Okay. Ah, Steve, the question about the food. There is this clarification here. Uh, someone says that maybe he's asking if it is halal. Yeah, I just wrote my answer there. It's a Muslim okay. country, gentlemen. Oh, okay, I saw your answer now. Of course, you can find halal food here. So, after we're done with our studies, is there any work permit issue? Uh, I mean, of course, yes, of course. Can we get the jobs easily after we're done with our studies? No, it's not easy. It's very difficult. You have to get a residence permit. You have to get a work permit. But I help you with that. 
So I make it a lot easier for you. But it's not easy. It's difficult. Oh. Okay, thank, thanks in advance. Uh, but you tell me, um, uh, can we get a uh, uh, student work permit? Yes. Uh, Gusum, yes, are they yes, able? They can, they can. They can work. Uh, they have to apply for student res um, sorry, working permit, of course. Uh, they can work up to, I think, 15, minutes, uh, 15 hours per week at the beginning. And later on, they can also get a, a full uh, working permit. Yeah. We have companies that are actively looking for international students because they want students with good foreign language skills. Um, I don't even know. I mean, the, 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 local, the local languages of Bangladesh, I guess you have hundreds of them, right? But the government language is English there, or am I wrong? Bengali. Bangladesh. Bangla. 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 Okay. Bengali. Okay. Because I think... Sorry. Because I think we have companies that actually are looking for people who speak Bengali because they want to do business in Bangladesh. So there, you can find these opportunities and I can help you with the little secrets to help you to get a job here. So I guarantee you that if you want to stay in Turkey and if you're willing to work hard, you can definitely find a job here. Okay, sir, so, so is... Our is freelance is allowed by this study? Okay, okay maybe one by one. And Noor, Tashvik and Noor are speaking at the same time. Let's start with Tashvik and then we'll go to Noor after. Is that okay? Yeah, right, sir. So uh, are we allowed to freelance while we study? Well, what do you mean by that? You mean you want to like start your own business? Not business, like uh, if someone's good at video editing, uh, if someone makes video, someone programs, uh, someone uh, manages other uh, social media pages like yeah so if he's okay, allowed to it's, do it's, all these things and make money it's out of very them. of course it's very easy to do that but you have to set up a business so that you can invoice and if you set up a business so that you can invoice then it's easy uh, setting up a business is a lot of work um, that's something that we could talk about offline um, of course, there's the option of, you know, doing some business sort of informally, but of course that's not recommended. Um, but if you wanted to talk about setting up your own business, I can help you because I did the same thing. I set up my own business in Turkey twice. And I think Noor had uh, a question. Sir, so are we allowed to manage our tuition fees by, uh, you know, by ourselves, by doing odd jobs and part-time jobs? Is it allowed? To manage well, our own tuition fees. Okay, but listen, it's uh, Nibaron. You you have to get hired by a company, and you have to get a work permit to legally work. If you want to do, as you said, odd jobs, I mean, of course, there are a lot of people who work off the books. They work illegally. They work for cash. But we don't recommend that you do that. So if you want to work legally, you would have to be hired by a company. They would have to issue you a work permit or you would have to set up your own business and then you don't even need a work permit. If you set up your own company, well, sorry, you do need the work permit, but you would sort of issue it to yourself. It's a very detailed discussion I can talk to you about separately. I think Noor had a question, but he wasn't able to speak. Yeah, sir. Sir, we are just a high school graduate and we are not, we should not, look, we should not look up for, for jobs. Um, we should learn more and more. I hope, uh, what will be the potential of Gaddy to let us know more and more about um, the international uh, business and jobs uh, for make our life better and better? Uh, you know, um, job, uh, for thinking job for now is not, I don't think so for potential about the Gaddy. What do you think? All right. All right, Noor, I am your personal career consultant. I have been an international businessman for many years. So the difference between me, sorry to praise myself, sorry to market myself, but that's my job. No, no, here. no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Well, most career counselors are these sort of, you know, they graduated with a degree in psychology and it's usually a young girl. And the girl tells you, oh, Noor, what color is your parachute to find your inner passion and you know they help you to decide on a career objective and they help you to decide what you want to do but they don't help you to do it the difference with me 
is that I am an international businessman. I have worked in New York. I have worked in Paraguay, South America. I've worked in Poland, Romania, and I've worked in Turkey. <clears throat> I've ran my own business. I've been a general manager. I've been a sales director. I've been an HR director. So I can have coaching sessions with you, workshops with you. Again, remember I told you the two things I do. First thing is I help you to decide what you want to do. And the second thing is I help you to achieve it with one-on-one -on -one coaching and workshops. Someone is asking if there's a subject in this university about careers? Well, I mean, you, yes, we, we actually do have a new career development course and I'm involved with that course. How do I know university has issued a circular? Gilson, do you understand that question? No, I, I don't get that question, but uh, they're asking for the programs, I think. So let me show my slide about the programs we offer. I will go yeah, back. and they could, also, they could also check our website. Mm. And guys, look, here's the website for English. You can check all of our programs there. It's gedik.edu.tr slash en for English. You can go there and click on academic and you can see all of our programs there. Is there any subject in this university? How do I know? I don't understand that question. You okay. mean a subject about Here careers? are the list of the bachelor programs we offer. The ones in bold, they are the ones uh, offered in English. The other ones, Offered in Turkish. So, if you have any questions regarding these subjects, international relations, international trade and finance, and mechatronics. Those are the three uh, English don't, programs. Don't you have? Uh, do you have economics? Not really, but we have just you know international trade and finance. I think it's the closest thing to economics. Of course, you have economic classes within the program. Yeah. But we don't offer a degree in economics. If you go to university, oh. what I should learn first, Turkish or associate program? Well, if you want to study in Turkish, you have to learn Turkish. If you want one of our programs that are not in English, obviously you have to learn Turkish first. What is the duration of learning the Turkish language? A tuition. Okay. Tuition fee of the Turkish courses? No, how long does it take? Ah, okay. Well, I I can tell you that it depends on your language skills. Some people are naturally good with languages. Some people are not. Um, I came to Turkey and I never took uh, a language class. I never took a Turkish course. I never had a Turkish teacher. And it took me eight months. And in eight months, I got a job in an office where nobody spoke English. The funny thing is it was the American Chamber of Commerce. The American Chamber of Commerce in Istanbul, nobody spoke English. Um, so yeah, that was after eight months, but I worked very hard and I'm quite good with languages. But I can tell you Turkish is a very easy language. Turkish is not a difficult language. Gülsüm, they're asking who provides the Turkish language course. I mean, we have Turkish courses that are- uh, Yes, Yüksek we, Okulu, we have right? a center called uh, Turkish Training Center. Tömer, uh, in Turkish, and they offer Turkish courses up to C1, from A1 to C1, A1, A2, B1, B2, and C1. But to study a bachelor program, except for law in Turkish at our institution, you just need to have B1 level of Turkish. And I think it would take you like four or five months. Yeah, I, I, I learned Turkish to the level where I was working in a, a Turkish language environment after eight months. And I was working at another university here and I asked the dean of the business school for the business students, I asked, can I teach these kids Turkish? And they said, yes. So I set up my own Turkish class and um, I had like 20 students in my Turkish class. So. I'm an experienced Turkish teacher, and uh, I'm happy to give you guys Turkish lessons. Yes, we give 100% scholarships if your grades are sufficient. G2. Don't you offer business administration course in bachelor programs? 
Unfortunately, no, but we offer in the master's program. MBA, master's in business administration. For undergraduate, we have international trade, international trade and finance, which is basically business. Any other questions? Computer engineering, electrical and electronics engineering, all these sectors are in English or Turkish? Turkish. We have Turkish. mechatronics in English. But these are the programs, uh, these are the uh, programs we're going to offer uh, in the academic year 2021 and 22. And beginning from change. 22 and 23, there will be more programs offered in English. Yes, we're trying to internationalize. Mm -hmm. So we want to attract more international students. Any other questions? Do you, so what are the master's programs of this university? Master programs? I think you have a slide for that, right? I think you have a slide. I had, but this, this is the presentation for this school only, so I removed that slide here. Ah, because it's for high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can talk about them. So um, we basically have master's program for each bachelor programs you see here. But for example, for computer, instead of computer engineering, we offer artificial intelligence master of science program. And uh, other than that, I think we basically offer a master's program for each bachelor program. Plus we have MBA, business administration, uh, engineering management, and uh, civil engineering uh, programs, uh, master's programs in English. Do we have computer engineering in English? No. Not yet. Maybe not not right now. We plan to, right? Yep, we are planning it. Khalid had a question. Khalid, were you going to say something? Uh, about, the, about the PhD programs, are they in English or Turkish? PhD programs? Yes, Do you have PhD. PhD programs? Okay, so all the PhD programs at Gedik University are offered in Turkish. And we don't tend to offer them in English soon. <laughs> they will stay Turkish. So it is one type of compulsory to learn Turkish. What are you going to do with a PhD, Kali? You want to be a professor? I had, no, I, no I, had a, I had a desire to do PhD, to complete PhD. Of course, that's after master's. A uh, long dream, that's it. A future plan. Uh, okay. So someone, I have asked a question. In, someone asked in the chat if we have uh, Bangladeshi students now, Gulsum. Sorry, I don't know. Yes, Adnan. actually, she must be with us today. I can't, I have to stop sharing. She's that. afraid. She's afraid because they're all boys. Adnan, oh, you had a question? Maybe. Yeah, so I asked the questions that all the books are also written in English or Turkish. Well, if it's an English program, the books are going to be in English. Oh, no, so that you say the course will be in Turkish. Well, if the course is in Turkish, the books are in Turkish. Oh, oh this is, yes. It is according to the courses, the language are varied from the books. That's right. Well, of course, in the Turkish language classes, all the books are in Turkish. The English language programs, the books are all in English. That means if I want to in, enroll for the computer science, I must learn Turkish for that compulsory. It seems so. For now, yes. For now, yes. Of course, I will learn. What should do I what I should do? I sometimes willing to live watch in, uh, Turkish, Turkish movies yeah. and Turkish TV series. <laughs> Is it helpful to so it'll be learn easier for Turkish? you? Yes, the revelation I, comes I, I, after I just watch to go. And I am accustomed to some of the Turkish words. Good. So it's easier. You're halfway there. Yeah. And love to learn Turkish because it's also in our blood sometimes. For some people, uh, sir, so, start uh, so now. Could you, yes, sir, could you please tell us about your personal experience? Like, how tough it was to get there in this university? Your personal experience, we went, how tough it was. 
Well, I mean, I didn't study at this university. I just work here. But it's not oh. very tough to get in. The tough part is to get the scholarships. Am I right, Gusen? Yeah. That's right, actually. Even, I studied uh, in New York. I'm from New York, man. Say again, Mama. Getting a scholarship is tough, is it? Is what? Is it difficult to get a, a scholarship? I have to see your transcript oh. records. Send Very your grades. Send us your grades. Are you a good student? Excuse me. Am I audible? Yes. OK. Uh, so I have a question related with these topics that, as you said, we don't need any particular examination for our scholarship. As you also said that we just want uh, to judge on our GPA. So my question is, how many percentage or GPA rate should be required for a student to get that scholarship? Yeah, yeah, same question here for uh, here science either. and uh, uh, business faculty. Okay, I, um, it's a committee decision, so I'm not entitled to speak on behalf of a committee. But I can give you a hint, like if your uh, GPA, cumulative GPA is over 90%, you would pr probably be offered 30% scholarship. That means and the rest is decided. The rest is decided case by case. Yeah. That means a good score for a good scholarship. Pretty yeah. logical. Yeah. In case of getting chance into university, what score will be counted? My term exam score or my culminated exam score? Culminated means HSC or A level. These kinds of exam. Well, I think your high school grades your are your transcript, GPA. right, Wilson? Yeah. Yes, it's high school GPA, not university entrance exam or anything. Yeah, no exams, just your grades at school. No, I think he's asking, we also have board exams. So are board exams counted or only the high school grades that we get as, as in first term examination, final term examination, the culminated uh, with GPA of all the examinations? That's what he's asking. Okay, uh, what is the final decision? Is it the board examinations? Yeah, yes, board, board examination is the is final institution of uh, our uh, education system. They uh, elect uh, several types of students uh, after two uh, or five years and take a exam in class five, eight, 10, and 12. And this is the basis of a student in Bangladesh. Okay, if it's type of an exam that uh, allows you or decides if you're a high school graduate or not, we take it into consideration. But if it is a university entrance type of exam, then we don't take it into consideration. So we have to- Can I apply harder. university by YSS score? YOS score? I have heard about YOS school, but I don't know the details when it is organized or how the result oh, is. We don't, we, we don't have YOS. YOS exam? Yes, yes, we don't need that. As, we don't need that either. We occasionally organize some scholarship examinations in different countries, but other than that, we don't need any other examinations. Okay. No exams. You guys keep asking about exams. This exam, that exam. No exams. We just want your transcript, your high school transcript. Any other questions? And that means it's very easy for the good students of the college or means the higher secondary. Steve, if we're willing could you get to... that? I didn't, I didn't understand. I think his voice was cut. Say again, Tommy. I was saying, I was saying that it would be a better chance. It would be a good chance for the good students who are in the high school of ours, because they are always brilliant and good 
in their remarks. Yeah. So that I was seeking that. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. That's what we want. So if we're willing to live in Turkey for four years at least, we must have to learn the language, right? Then, I mean, you don't have to, but you should. Don't you think so? Then with that proficiency, that wouldn't be a problem to attend the Turkish courses. Say it again, Rubayet. Yeah. If we're willing to live in Turkey for four years, we have we somehow have to learn the Turkish language. And then we can absolutely uh, uh, try for the courses in Turkish, right? It's recommended. It's absolutely recommended. I never took any Turkish courses. And I speak Turkish fluently. You can so, teach yourself. You get a so good Turkish book. If we want to book. take Turkish courses, we have to take the proficiency test, right? Yeah, in order to start the studies in Turkish, yes, you have to sit for an uh, proficiency exam in Turkish. But we have Reja here. Reja, are you there? Can you tell us about your personal experiences as a, a Bangladesh student studying in Turkey? Yeah, sure. I think language is not that tough to learn because I also came here. I'm studying here at Istanbul University and I got a course for 10 months and it was really easy because there are so many Persian words in Turkish and so many Arabic words in Turkish also and we have the same words in Bangla language. So personally, I didn't find it much tough to learn this language and as uh, Mr. Steve said, Turkish people are very much helpful and they're really helping and they're really appreciating when a foreigner wants to learn the language. So I, I found it really easy and I'd recommend. Absolutely. And, and you know, um, I found that so many Turks are so excited and happy and joyful to help you to learn Turkish. So when I was learning Turkish, do you want to know what my two schools were? My two schools were, one of them was the shop downstairs below my building, the shop where they sell beer and milk and cigarettes. I used to just sit in that shop and drink tea. Nobody spoke any English and they would love teaching me Turkish. The second school after the shop was the taxi stand mm -hmm. where, the, where the taxis are. I would go in there where they're driving the taxis and they would love teaching me Turkish and it's just free lessons. And they would teach you the bad words, the funny words, the jokes, um, the slang, the street language. So it's, it's a lot of fun because not a lot of people come to Turkey and learn Turkish, right? Very few people learn Turkish. So if you want to learn Turkish and you're not a Turk, the Turkish people find that very nice. They find it very sweet and they just want to help you. And to begin with, as Reja said, there's a lot of similar words, but also the grammar in Turkish is a very simple grammar. Like I learned Russian and I learned Polish. Can I tell you what the Polish language is? The Polish language is a language that was designed to be kept secret. <laughs> Nobody can learn that language, but Turkish is easy. And you know what you can do? Uh, we talked about the student clubs. You can come together and you can just form your own club, yeah. like Turkish speaking club. Yeah. And Good still idea. be your advisor and you, you would come together and practice Turkish. And we will be uh, supporting that, definitely. Brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of that? I'm always telling the Turkish students to start an English club, but Gusum is so right. You should come here and start a Turkish club. We don't have that. Yeah. What will Gedik do about job safety in Turkey? What will Gedik do about what? Uh, what will Gedik do about our safety in Turkey while studying there? Well, I mean, it's, it's a pretty safe country, guys. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, it's so safe here. I mean, what will Gedik do about your safety? I mean, of course we have security guards on the campus and I'm guessing Gusum at the dormitories that we're using, they have security also. Of course, of course. Yeah, definitely. That's why uh, we have agreement uh, with those uh, accommodation facilities. They, we find them as the safe places to live for our students. Guys, guys, can I tell you a funny story? You wanna hear a funny story? Sure, I have, I have been in Istanbul for 25 years, 25 years. Do you know how many times I had some kind of a physical problem, somebody attacked me, or I had some kind of a violent event in Turkey? Zero. 
Zero. Do you know how many times? Do you know how many times it happened to me in New York, where I'm from? Like hundreds of than, times. Uh, five hundreds, to times. Hundreds of times. Oh, so hundreds my, of times. Yeah, my mother tells me, "Oh my God, you're in Istanbul. Are you safe?" I'm like, "Mom, are you crazy? Home is much more dangerous." So it's a very, oh my very, God. it's a very safe city. Very safe city. Yeah. And Istanbul is really a beautiful city, indeed, in the world. It is. So beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. I, I'm here 25 years, and I get bored easily. Do you understand me? I'm a hyperactive person who gets bored very easily, and I never got bored in Istanbul. I got bored in New York. I got bored in Poland. I got bored in Romania. You just cannot get bored in Istanbul. You understand? Yeah, Turks are very friendly and at the same time very cooperative and very much, what should I say, uh, means uh, um, praising them is very, uh, very small word for them. They are really far beyond their praise and they're really good. I love Turkish people because they are very kind hearted and like also Bangladeshis are also like that, but Turkish are have the similarity so as in culture so it's easy to adapt just in Turkey, yeah i think love you back guys thank you ma'am thank you sir uh, turkish tv serials are much more popular than Bangladesh or hindi tv serials in our country especially <laughs> in inspired the youth no tv abdullah don't watch tv it makes your brain into soup no tv <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. I think we're done. Yeah. You just and I will share my contact detail here. Details Jesus, here. it's been over. It's been over an hour. Time flies <laughs> when you're in Bangladesh. Yeah. Sure. Here. Okay. Here you can also see uh, my contact details, phone number, and email. You can reach us out anytime you want. Yeah, you already got Steve's number. I can put well. it again in the chat. Oh, sorry. For the Turkish, you have to put the nine zero first. Oh, yeah, that's right. What is the cost of accommodation in Turkish? Flats, apartments, or a single rooms or hotel or any other place? Accommodation, he's asking about accommodation. You mean you don't want to stay in the dormitory? You want to get like an apartment, you mean? Yeah, yeah, it's to the yeah. dorm. Generally saying, apartment or a dormitory, average prices. Well, I think what some of the students do, and Gusum, you can add something here if you would like to, but I know that some of the students share an apartment, like two or three students That's together. Right. Yes. get an apartment and they live there together you can yeah, do that but for an international student it can be a bit hard at the beginning but you can just rent a studio flat around the campus there are some like uh 40 square meter uh small flats that you can rent with the, with the uh i mean furnished flats so it wouldn't be that expensive yes you can get vegan food oh vegan food Steve. i'm vegan yeah and I'm almost vegan. Almost there. I'm going there slow. Welcome, sister. Welcome. You can get the vegan food. There's so much good vegan food in, in Istanbul. Aritra, come here and join us. Convert me to a vegan and let's form our vegan Turkish speakers club here. Yeah, yeah, I will we're try. Gonna make all of you, we're going to make you all vegan and Turkish speakers. Great we want it to be. I like this. I like meat badly. And I'm going to Turkey for kebab. <laughs> well, there's good meat here too. Yeah. You can find everything in Istanbul, everything. Okay, uh, Where will I find Erdogan? <laughs> I think he's a lot more handsome than I am, so I guess that's a compliment. Thank you very much. 
Any well, other questions? Sir. <laughs> Thank you, Tashvi. Sorry, but I'm married. <laughs> So oh, yeah. I'm, the only, on, I'm the only lady in the group and yeah. you got yeah, the compliment. Yeah, you are. You got the compliment. This is unfair. <laughs> I am so handsome, I'm almost pretty. Okay, guys. So if there's no other questions, let's wrap up. Yeah, okay. nice to meet you guys. Details. You can reach us anytime. And... Uh, thank you, Reja, for connecting Thanks, Reja. With these guys. We like them very much. Thank and you. We hope to host them here. We hope to get to meet them personally. Come on over. Um,